Some models are so hard to 3D print, they really feel like torture. But for the best of these, it's totally worth the ordeal. Let's explore the most satisfying 3D printing torture tests. It might sound counterintuitive, but 3D printing torture tests are actually fantastic. Rather than print something you know will work, they force you to find and overcome weaknesses in your hardware and your own knowledge. This overhang egg from E3D is a good example of that. But now that it's printed, what do I do with it? Today, I present to you seven torture tests that are worth the effort because the end product is so satisfying. Some of these models are free and some of them cost a few dollars. But one thing they share in common is they're all beautifully designed. Let's jump in. My first model might surprise you because it's a vase and vases are rarely considered torture tests but this is by far the most complicated geometry I've ever found in a vase. I present to you a slightly over-engineered Olpe vase by Nat A. Cyborg. As we can see, this was an award winner for a vase competition on printables. And if we come down to the files, we have the solid version, which I would recommend starting with. Pretty much every slicer will support spiral or vase mode. So we click to enable it, let the slicer adjust the settings accordingly, and we're ready to slice. And once we have a G-code preview, we can see the internal shape is entirely different to what's on the outside. And that will give us a chance to examine the preview and see just how dynamic the border of this shape is. Believe it or not, I actually had a failure the first time I tried to print this, thanks to me tangling the filament as I mounted it onto the machine. On the second attempt, however, I managed to produce a flawless version using my RatRig vCore 3. I already think that this vase is tremendously satisfying to look at, especially when we introduce some moving light. But where I think it truly shines is when you introduce light, either inside or from underneath like you're seeing here. This model would make an incredible lampshade, and I'm considering printing a really big one to do just that. In summary, for our first model, our print challenges are extrusion consistency, some overhangs as well as overall surface quality. I printed this one on my RatRig vCore 3 with a fine layer height from Silk PLA and that took 13 and a half hours. This is more complicated than other vases, but overall it's not very torturous, so let's step things up. Next up, we have Floalistics Chainmail, also known as 3D printable fabric. I've printed a few different chainmail designs over the years and each of them has been super satisfying to peel off the bed and magically become a flowing flexible fabric. They all look great, but this one from Floalistic is by far my favourite. And that's because all of the other designs I've printed tend to be fragile. But this one is quite robust, yet still very flexible. It's also quite large, which makes it more tactile. When you're printing chainmail, you need to have an absolutely spot on first layer. For this model, there's over 300 little segments, and if any of them peel off later on, there's a good chance they'll keep dislodging more segments, knocking them off like dominoes. The other thing that needs to be completely spot on are your attractions. If you get that wrong, in between all of these segments will become a stringy mess. If your printer can handle those challenges, you'll end up with one of the most satisfying 3D prints that you can make. Whether you're letting the chainmail flow over 3D shapes or creating wave patterns by articulating it, the satisfaction is palpable. What some people don't always understand about chainmail is that you can modify it before printing. Here, I copy and paste the entire model and then position them so they overlap. By doing this, you can duplicate to match the dimensions of your bed. Most slicers will also let you split a model into multiple objects if possible, with this model having 324. This means you can now go in, click and delete individual segments to make whatever pattern you like. And it took me about 5 minutes to create this chainmail love heart. Just remember to group the items back together before printing, especially before you hit auto arrange, or the slicer will do its best to spread them all out again. I again printed this variation on the Bamboo Lab P1P, and again I got another fantastic result, except this time customised. So here's how this model ranked. It's a great test of your first layer level, your bed adhesion and your attraction, and the fact that the Bamboo Lab P1P did this on the first go is testament to its quality. This is much harder to print than average, but a lot easier than what's to come. I think it's time to step up the degree of difficulty. Our next stress test is this foldable card G by Goo Design. 
and I really could have picked any of the models from Fab365 as the quality is so consistent and outstanding. As you can see from these previews, these models print almost like a transformer, partially assembled and laid out before being folded and clipped into position to make the final form. The reason I went with this G-Wagon for this video is that everything prints in a single piece and that includes moving wheels and opening bonnet. Most of the models on this website do cost a few dollars, but it's definitely worth it. In addition to some slicer settings to help you have success, you get dedicated assembly videos showing you how to put everything together. I'm using the P1P from Bamboo Lab as my dedicated PETG printer, making this one with blue filament. It printed flawlessly on the first attempt with all of the moving parts articulating as they should, so let's put this together. Our first step is to make a permanent fold on the four corners of the roof. The filament is very thin here and I chose PTG rather than PLA as it should be able to flex a little more easily without snapping. With everything roughly in position, we then push from side to side to snap the two clips at the rear together. The under tray and wheels will then slide towards the center and push downwards to lock into place. Finally, we have this lock described as a drive shaft, which we push down to hold the two halves permanently together. The cherry on the top is locking the rear wheel into position with another clip. You have to take your hat off and admire the design here. This whole vehicle, including moving bonnet and wheels, is printed in one piece with zero support and has the bonus of being so satisfying to put together. You might notice on Fab365, when paying for a model, you earn a free item. According to the terms, you also earn one of these tickets when signing up for an account. And the thing about Fab365 is that the free models are quite often the best ones. For instance, all of the vehicles from Star Wars that can't be sold for money because of licensing. So when you buy an excellent model off this site, you're actually getting a two for one deal with the second model most likely being even better than the first. This model is quite strange as a torture test. On paper, it's testing your clearances, overhangs and layer adhesion, but I was able to print it first go on a Bamboo Lab P1P. So the difficulty is perhaps lower than it should be simply because the designer has put in so much effort to ensuring your success. So let's step things up with this Torture Toaster by Clockspring 3D, another very decorated 3D designer. This one is designed to be a torture test as the name implies. There's only one file that's again print in place with a single piece. But within this one design, there's quite a lot that will test your machine. For instance, these clearance gauges built into one side, moving gears in each of the fold down segments, a series of overhang tests on the other side, and the base mechanism for the toast to rise when the lever is pressed. This one I printed from PLA on the second SK tank. It completed on the first go, but that doesn't mean at all that it's an easy print. Let's flex it off the bed and run through the various tests. Firstly, both of the sides hinge up and down, so that's a pass there. On one side, we have these clearance segments, and the idea is to see if they are free to move up and down. They get tighter from right to left, and on this print, I was able to move them all the way down to 0.2 millimeters, but my tightest 0.1 millimeter segment remained fused. Each side has a geared locking mechanism. Both sides worked great for me, but we can see on the overhang test, my result is far from perfect, particularly on those mega steep 80 degree overhangs. The final test is to push the lever and see if the toast will pop, and mine only partially lifts up, Everything seems to be moving freely, but I don't want to push any harder and risk breaking the model. This torture toaster did print on the first attempt, but there's plenty of room for improvement and it would be a suitable tool to experiment with printer and slicer settings until you got everything perfect. Independent of that, it makes a satisfying fidget toy for those inclined. Let's summarize the torture toaster. It tests many things, such as your clearances, overhangs, layer adhesion, and your first layer, as there's many small parts that will break loose if they're not gripping the bed securely. I printed mine from PLA on the second SK tank in seven and a half hours. And I'm giving this one a difficulty of three stars, although if you wanna get it perfect, it's definitely more like four stars. Our next entry is designed by Angus of Maker's Muse and will cost you a princely sum of $3. This particular model is called the Clearance Castle. Before you purchase, I'd highly recommend checking out Angus's dedicated companion video that details his design process, how it challenges your printer, and how to operate its moving parts. It's also worth pointing out that when you pay for this file, you actually get four different tests, which can save you time. 
We have this very quick clearance card with three different clearances. We have the drawbridge component isolated, excellent for testing bridging. And then we have this clearance tower with the outer ring being separate to the central pillar. And as Angus explains, you lift up the outer ring until it jams and then you'll have a handy readout for the clearances your printer can achieve. For the main castle, everything is in one piece, again print in place. This is a fairly small model, so I originally tried to print it on my Prusa Mini using a 0.2mm nozzle, but I seem to have a partial clog leading to intermittent under extrusion, which you could see earlier in the print, but eventually this led to a complete blockage and a failure. Interestingly, you can also see that the part cooling and therefore the bridging for this printer isn't really the best. So I switched to my rat rig using its regular 0.4mm nozzle and everything started really well until the nozzle knocked the drawbridge loose from the bed and then soon after knocked the left tower free too. I had two failures like this. All of the clearances were great, I just needed a little more bed adhesion. So I used exactly the same slicer settings on my second SK tank which has a particularly grippy PEI bed and finally this yielded an excellent result. After snapping it free from the printer, I went through the assortment of tests. First is to lower the drawbridge, which has the largest clearance of all. No problems there, so we move on to the left tower puzzle, which is required to open the main gate. This is hard to describe, but there's a maze on the inside of the parts, and you need to twist back and forth, move up and down, to move a lobe through the trench, cut into the inner tower. After a little while, I had the puzzle solved, and I could complete the last part of the test, opening up the gate. This test is really satisfying to complete and it's just a really nice looking design, worthy of gifting to a child or sitting it on display. Comparing to the Prusa Mini, we can see we have really nice clean bridging on the second SK tank and it's only the steepest part of the overhangs that could be improved. So how torturous was the clearance castle? As the name suggests, it tests clearances but also overhangs and particularly bridging and as you saw with my results you need a really solid first layer. I was ultimately successful on the second SK tank, printing with a fine layer height in just under 4 hours. For difficulty, I give this one a 3 out of 5, I think I would have got it first go if I started on this particular printer. These last two gave me quite a lot of trouble. Into proper stress test territory with this Pipbot 1 print in place robot by Extreme 3D Print. This one costs just under 5 euros but again I would submit that it's well worth the money. Included in the download are a calibration section. This includes two separate SDLs for testing your first layer and then annotated diagrams for interpreting them. We also get the source cat in three different formats in case you want to design your own add-ons or modifications. And then we get the actual model with different versions such as low res, high res and without any tracks. Like most of these designs, this is a print in place object but it is extremely intricate. All of these pieces around the outside are parts of moving tank tracks. And as you can see, they have quite steep overhangs for each. And then in this central hollow section, we have even more steep overhangs to truly test our machine. I started trying to print this in PLA, but those little overhangs kept on curling up, catching the nozzle and then dislodging. I tried PLA with a few different machines, but the result was always the same. One small segment would come loose and then knock the other ones around it loose as well. I tried using some ASA as it won't ooze as much as PLA but I'm pretty sure I had the wrong print setting as it ended up a melted mess. Attempting to free the parts ended in their failure. PETG was the happy filament in the Goldilocks zone and this printed first go on the P1P only slowing down the speed very slightly to help with the part cooling. You're about to see why this for me is the most satisfying model in this collection. As soon as you pop it loose, we'll hopefully have two fully moving articulated tank treads. And when you finish playing with those, you can fold the model in the middle, which will transform the orientation into that required for a tank. It's hard to describe how satisfying it is to play with this in your hand, particularly given it was difficult to print. To keep it folded permanently, there's a hole in the middle to put a bolt through. Let's rate this print in place robot. This will test your clearances, particularly steep overhangs, your first layer grip and fine details. The winning printer for me was the Bamboo Lab P1P using PTG and it took just over 6 hours. I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 5 for difficulty because I imagine a lot of people will struggle to get it to complete. Last but certainly not least is this print in place engine by Sunshine. Like the clearance castle, this one comes with a dedicated companion video with Sunshine explaining how it was designed and the various tests you can complete by printing it. 
I should note that I'm printing the original, but there are updates with the V8, one cylinder and V twin versions available for download too. This is easily the smallest model out of all of those featured, but don't let that fool you. This is probably the hardest to complete. For me, the cleverest thing about the design are these really narrow strands, which hold up the pieces and give the impression that some components print in midair. Again, this model is print in place, so you'll need your printer to be able to reproduce tiny gaps between the moving pieces, but also be able to print these single strand bridges, which will go on to support whole pieces built on top of them. Let's fast forward and say that it took me quite a few tries to get this one to print successfully. Quite often, there would be one tiny little loose component that failed and ruined some of the extrusion above. This meant that when I tried to turn the engine, parts would snap and it would be a failure. I tried PLA, I tried PETG, I tried printing fast to help the bridges and slow to help the layer adhesion. But time after time, as I tried to rotate the parts, one of them would snap and remain motionless. The winner was a change in filament, as I loaded up some Volcano PLA, which I found very forgiving when trying to print speed benches in the past. It's got a wax-like finish, giving a smooth outer surface and it sticks extremely well to a PEI bed. Off the printer, the only blemishes were some very minor stringing, so I grabbed a blade and started to very carefully cut the one strand wide bridges that hold the components up in midair. After some more probing and maneuvering to ensure that all of the parts were free of each other, the moment of truth came and finally I was able to rotate the crank with all three cylinders moving up and down. I think this print in place mechanism is satisfying in its own right, but it was all the sweeter because I had to struggle so much to get here. Here's our final report card. This model will test clearances, bridging, layer adhesion, but in particular, tiny details, with those little junctions looking for any excuse to snap. Eventually, my final printer was the Ratrig V-Core 3 using Volcano PLA in just under an hour and a half. This model, I feel, deserves a full 5 out of 5 stars for difficulty. If you ask me, it's a win-win. From printing these, you hone your skills, which brings its own satisfaction, plus the prize of using the final object. When printing these, I found where one printer excelled, another would struggle and vice versa, and that's gonna inform my project printing in future. Let me know your favorite one of these, or perhaps one that I've missed that's even better in the comments section below. Thank you to the talented designers for designing these objects. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy satisfactory 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.